there friends welcome back to my channel planty princess 92 my name is Ashley today we are doing another episode of spilling the soil Hoya edition it's been a few videos since I posted one of these episodes I just have so many videos coming up that I want to get posted so it took me a couple a couple video postings to finally get this one up so here we go Today I'm going to be talking about the Hoya Australis Lisa. The Hoya Australis in general is a very popular common type of Hoya nowadays. In 1770, for the first time, British explorers approached the shores of Australia. On its shores is where naturalists came across this new Hoya and named it Hoya Australis, meaning Southern Hoya. Today, as I just mentioned, there are many types of Hoya Australis and among them are very spectacular and beautiful cultural hybrids of this particular species. One of the most popular being the Hoya Australis Lisa, which is the Hoya I'm going to talk about today. This is such a gorgeous and unique Hoya. The leaves are nice and uh, they're a little bigger sized. They're more succulent-like, but not too thick. They have a very nice variegation to them. And when I look at this variegation, like what I think of really honestly is like a Picasso or Van Gogh painting on a leaf. It is just so stunning the way the variegation kind of just literally paints the leaf. I love the way this variegation spreads through the leaf. It's really just amazing. This is one of my favorite Hoyas for sure. And I really love the way the newer leaves come in. They are this very nice, vibrant, reddish pink color. And they really do look gorgeous. Providing this plant lots of bright and direct sun can bring out that pink in the variegated parts of the leaf. This one is on the slower side for growth, but once it starts growing, it definitely does take off in my experience. Took a while for this plant to start growing, but once it did start growing, it literally wouldn't stop. It is still growing all through winter. This plant has been growing so great for me. I even ended up propagating it. And again, after I propagated, it did take a month or so, probably around two months before it shot up another tendril. But as you see here, it just didn't stop. It just kept growing and kept growing, kept putting off new beautiful leaves and it's particularly easy to care for as well these plants definitely like to dry out very much between waterings they don't require a lot of water and what's nice is you'll know when they need water because their leaves will get very soft and normally they're really kind of stiff even the thicker leaf toy as i find even though they're not stiff in the sense of like thickness you can definitely tell when they need a drink because you know, they'll, they'll have like some structure to them, some support to them. And then when they're thirsty, like this is a newer leaf, so it's still able to be like bended, but this is what will happen when they need a drink rather than, you know, this one doesn't bend like that. So it's really easy to tell by the feel when this Hoya needs a drink. Um, and I really like that about this plant because it makes it easy for waterings. I keep mine in let guy grow most of my Hoyas semi-hydroponically. I find that my Hoyas really do love that, especially this Hoya in general. Ever since I transferred this to Lekka, it has gotten tons of new roots. The root system has just flourished, which is great. And it really has just been loving it. I keep this in my grow tent. The humidity is definitely higher. I think these will do fine in a general household humidity, 40, 50% but they will definitely thrive with a higher humidity, 60, 70, 80% if possible. It's best to keep these in a grow tent, near a humidifier, or if none of those options are available, it's definitely great to miss these girls in the morning. That way the sunlight doesn't scorch the leaves when the water's on them. You also don't wanna miss at night either because then that water settles and can form powdery mildew on their leaves which doesn't look too appealing although it's not that harmful it's not it's not appeasing to the eye I think that's all I have to say about this gorgeous Hoya today it's just one of my many favorites that is just absolutely stunning 
This is definitely a showstopper. This one is not too hard to find, so it definitely is a beginner Hoya that is great to add to your collection if you're looking for something with a little variegation, something a little more tropical looking, but also easy to care for. This is definitely one you should try out and add to your collection. Thank you guys again for joining me in another episode of Spilling the Soil. Hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about this beauty. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're interested in the content I provide. And as always, every plant's a princess. Bye!